We will wait five minutes and then we will start session. Let maximum join here. Seven students have joined. Uh, very nice, Ankush. You kept your camera on. So at least uh, beginning we will have uh, facial interaction and then we will have a proper class or the session on HACCP. Okay. So yes, sir. If, if you, good afternoon. Good afternoon. If you can keep your cameras on, uh, let me have a look at you. Uh, if it is possible at your end, uh, that will give us, uh, that way we will interact with each other. Uh, but keep yourself muted, Ankush, keep yourself muted so yes. that uh, disturbance will not be there. Good, others also joining, switching on camera. Very good, very good. Now I could see you and uh, uh, we will we will have more interaction. I want this session to be more interactive. Till now, 15 students have joined. So let us wait another two minutes and then we will start. Very good. All, all are joining uh, with the live camera. Uh, nice to see you all faces, young faces with the energy and uh, i think you all are in the fifth semester and have completed your industrial training uh, and uh, now you will be passing out and then you have to join industry again uh, madam also joined madam good afternoon uh, madam you are muted you can unmute yourself and Almost all are joining, joining, they are here. Okay, so one more minute, uh, let us wait for a few more to join and then we will start. For initial few minutes, keep your camera on so that uh, let me see, uh, let me have a look at you. And then once we start uh, presentation and other activities, that time you can switch off camera. Initial maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And keep yourself muted uh, if it creates a disturbance. Very good, very good. Uh, around uh, 17 students are there in this group. Okay. Madam, shall we start? Uh, yes, yes, sir. Please. Okay, okay. So, my request, Madam. Good yeah, good afternoon, Madam. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, students. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Okay. So okay. here we have a uh, expert guest speaker, Mr. Uh, Dr. Lumte, sir, from ICI, Tirupati. So now you got a good opportunity 
to acquire more knowledge from the expert speaker ma regarding the topic we already discussed right hap hacccp that means hazard analysis critical control point regarding the topic sir is going to give more knowledge okay so you people are very lucky that uh, expect spe uh, speaker is with you okay all the best all of you uh, please take a notes if uh, there is any important you just take a running notes also ma okay okay so over to you sir thank yeah. you sir thank you for thank you thank you for being with us thank and you, spending madam. time with our students and we are also pleased to welcome you thank you uh, for our institute sir for taking the lecture thank you thank you madam. we are very glad to invite you sir thank you madam thank you very much at the outset actually i would like to thank sunita madam our uh, principal giri babu sir uh, and the all faculties of the state institute of hotel management and catering technology uh, and also would like to thank you all student that you are joining uh, with a great enthusiasm here uh, to learn about hacccp or also we called hasap or whatever short form but it is hacccp okay so on that uh, we are going to have a very nice interactive session today and uh, hope you people uh, will like it and definitely uh, uh, you will make use of this knowledge in your future okay so before starting uh, i will just uh, introduce myself and then i would like to hear from you uh, uh, whosoever is available just your name and which place you are okay and during this session only i need your camera uh, on so uh, after that you can uh, switch off camera keep yourself muted be in the session and there will be few questions that you can answer through uh, through chat box or even you can unmute yourself and uh, ask me and also there will be at the end we will have question answer session so that uh, if you have a doubt or anything uh, that also can be uh, clarified okay so this is the uh, 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 this is how it is going to happen today so dear student i would like to introduce myself i am dr lomte uh, uh, at uh, indian culinary institute tirupati just in university only Uh, but uh, because of this pandemic situation we are separated you are at your respective native places and uh, madam is there in sihm i am here in the icai campus i have basically i am a hotel management graduate i have done post graduation in tourism management and also phd in hotel and tourism management and uh, that that is about my educational qualification about my work experience i started with the cricket club of india uh, you all must have heard about the brabon stadium uh, there i started my career with cricket club of india moved to uh, pno cruises i was on the pno cruise for 2 years then from there again i moved to irctc uh, there i was uh, around 2 uh, and a half year uh, then i moved uh, to state government of maharashtra Uh, to teach certificate program in food production uh, four and a half year i was there and last four years i have i am working with indian culinary institute uh, as a faculty member uh, we also started initially uh, i think uh, madam i request you keep yourself muted some disturbance is coming from your mic from my side okay yeah, fine yeah yeah keep yourself muted thank you madam so now it is very clear uh we we started our journey indian culinary institute started our journey at uh, uh, state institute of hotel management and catering technology tirupati campus that was our makeshift campus in 2016 two years we were there in the sihm and in 2018 we moved to our permanent campus uh, near papanaidu peta near airport okay so this is about me i teach uh, Uh, food production fnb service and um, other all ancillary subject i am now i am teaching to mba students also uh, that is about my uh, introduction and about me about uh, indian culinary institute okay so students quickly i don't want to waste time it is just 5 minutes i have i just want to know 
your name and where you are right now okay so i will just call one by one uh, don't unmute yourself it is as per the list shown there on the uh, people list okay there so first akash you can unmute yourself and uh, just speak about you and where yes, you are right from hello i am akash yadav i am from nagpur maharashtra very good nice to know about you ankush ankush is i think not ready people you have to unmute yourself uh, speak about you and mute again so i'm ready sir yeah yeah please I'm ankush ready, sir. yeah yeah please I am Pankush Singh and I am from Kolkata, West Bengal. Very good, very good. Nice to know about you. Why I am I am getting this information uh, to make you understand because you I would like to know the background of the group. Okay, so next is Arjun. Ah. Hi, sir. I am Arjun and Kumar. I am from Kerala. Very good, very good. Nice to know about you. Thank you, Ashutosh. Yes. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Ashutosh Shankarani, and I am from Sangli, Maharashtra. Very good, very good. Nice to know about you. Uh, then we have Chaitu. Hello, sir. I am Chaitanya, and I am from Tirupati. Very good, very good. Thank you, Dipesh. Dipesh. Okay. We will go with the next uh, participant here. Food bag. So very nice name. Would like to know your real name and where you are. Food bag. Okay. Uh, I think whenever they are available, we will go back to them. Harish. Sir, I am Harish Kumar from Tamil Nadu. Okay. Thank you. Nice to know about you. Uh, then we have uh, uh, Subhash. Yeah. Hi sir, I am from Hyderabad sir. Very good, very good. Okay, thank you. Uh, then we have uh, Mani Raj. Okay, we will go to the next person, uh, Kulse Kulsekar Gupta. Fine. Next person, Venkatesh. Sir, this is Manogna. Yeah. Manogna, Yeah. You are from which place? Anantapur, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, Manogna. Sorry, I could not uh, pronounce your name properly. Thank you very much, Mohan. Sir, my Mohan Reddy, sir. Very good. I am from Tirupati. Okay, nice to know about you, Mohan. Thank you, uh, Monish. Ashutosh, keep yourself muted. Manish. Manish is not there. Then we have somebody known Nanu. Hi, sir. My name is Niranjan and I am from Chittu. Very good, very good. Okay. Uh, Thank you, sir. Uh, good uh, fancy name you have kept as your profile name. Uh, then it's we my... have. Yeah, thank you. We have uh, Namina cool. Khanam. Namina, you were online. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. I am Namira Khanam uh, from Namira. Pune. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Na I pronounce Namina. It's Namira. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have next uh, neutral PP. Please come online and just uh, tell about yourself. Ha. Ah, you you mute your unmute yourself. No, no, your, your voice is not audible. Uh, unmute yourself. Ah, now you can speak. Hello, sir. Myself, Pond from Bihar. Very good, very good. Okay, thank you. Uh, then we have Omkar. Welcome, Omkar. Good afternoon, sir. I am from uh, Maharashtra, Pune. Oh, very good. Plenty of Maharashtrians are there in this batch. Nice to know. Yes. I am also from Maharashtra, basically. Mm, then we have uh, Pandi Kumar. Hi, sir. I'm Pandi Kumar. I'm from Tamil Nadu, sir. Madurai. Okay. Thank you. Nice to know about you. Prasant Chaudhary, next person. Welcome, sir. Sir, I'm Prasant Chaudhary. I'm from Chittur, sir. 
ओके थैंक यू देन वी हैव राधा लालम हाय सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर सर माय नेम इज प्रेम कौर आई एम फ्रॉम वाइजैक ओके ओके योर नेम इज डिफरेंट ओके थैंक यू वी हैव वी हैव राहुल वेमुला गुड आफ्टरनून सर आई एम राहुल वेमुला फ्रॉम मुंबई महाराष्ट्र वेरी गुड ओके थैंक यू देन वी हैव मिस्टर संदीप विनय so myself sandeep vinay i am from ap in nellur very good thank you sandeep then we have a uh, suresh uh, somya sorry somya with us good afternoon sir i am somya manigani from tamil nadu okay thank you somya next is suresh thank you sir. good afternoon sir myself suresh suryavanshi i am from maharashtra nanded very good very good nice to know about you uh, next we have tina yadav Good afternoon, sir. I am Tina Adha from Tirupati. Very good, very good. Nice to know about you, Tina. Thank you, all of you. Last, madam is there. Madam, uh, you all know about madam. Even I know about madam. Uh, so uh, now, few students have joined in, in between. Why this exercise we have taken is to uh, make you more attentive in this classroom. Okay. So, dear student, let us start the journey about. has up you must have studied little bit in earlier your syllabus but uh, today we will have a little more knowledge and also interactive session if you have any question in between definitely uh, you can uh, put it in a chat box and we will take all questions at the end i will try to answer all the questions at the end so let me present today's presentation and that's how we will go ahead okay so here is my presentation okay so hazard analysis and critical control point you all are i know i no need to explain you about what is hscp uh, and uh, Uh, the purpose, but definitely the purpose we are going to uh, have in detail discussion on that. Uh, so during this session, what is the ultimate aim of having this session on HACCP or HACCP is uh, we should uh, be aware about the different terms associated with the uh, HACCP. What is exactly hazard and what are critical control points? Okay, so these two things are very very important. in the hscp system uh, the hazard and critical control points and then why we are uh, studying and why the food businesses are taking uh, this hscp voluntarily because this is an international standard uh, system standardization system for the food businesses okay so why voluntarily people go for hscp or it it is not mandatory in india till now it is not mandatory what is mandatory for food related businesses is fssai food safety and standards authority of india give a license you take any even a small 1 rupee chocolate packet there also you will find fssai written on that you take any biscuit packet any eatable there you will find fssai okay so the food safety and standards authority authority of india is an authority or food businesses in india where hscp is not an authority but still many of the food businesses go for hasap certification or hscp certification so dear students we will understand the purpose of hscp in the food business then we will we will try to understand the history how this hscp got evolved and the very very important one are the seven principles of hscp process and then few certificate providers uh, this is an international uh, standardization system for the food businesses definitely the certificate providing agencies are there and we will discuss little bit about them in the coming presentation so dear students it is a legal responsibility this uh, uh, food business is an legal responsibility because we uh, when you cook food at your home it is for your family and your relatives but when you cook food at a restaurant at at a public eatery or at a public place for a catering business definitely 
it is a responsibility it is for the public health if something goes wrong in that preparation definitely it is the food business responsibility so uh, that's uh, to provide a safe or good quality food is the responsibility of any restaurant or at or any eating uh, place okay so the food business that breaks the law if you are not following procedure if you are not uh, taking appropriate actions or if you are not following good hygienic practices definitely you will receive an improvement notices if you are hygienic conditions are not good sometimes people have to uh, if it is uh, uh, you take an example of a state instead of hotel management and there in nearby vicinity you have one some catering shop okay or the some uh, stall and uh, people are falling sick because of eating there if that is the case definitely uh, uh, that particular business may receive an notice or the improvement notice from either local authority or from the people who are consuming so the providing food is an a uh, legal responsibility you cannot play with the public health you have to provide if you are charging them if you are taking money from them definitely you are responsible you are legally responsible right okay so uh, this food businesses they are responsible for the public health then what can be if you don't follow rules then definitely you may receive a prohibition notices to stop your business uh, if you are uh, if you are not procuring good ingredient if you are not storing them properly if you are not cooking in a good hygienic practices or if you are not maintaining the conditions food uh, conditions properly and because of eating those kind of a food if public is getting public health is getting affected definitely uh, the, the authorities may will they may ask you to shut down the business and at the last if this improvement you are not improving if you are you have been asked to uh, shut down your businesses uh, or stop particular uh, uh, if different segments are there out of that like you have a coffee shop you have a um, uh, then uh, uh, you have a fine dining restaurant out of that they will ask you to shut down one if you are not doing that then the, this case will go to the court and the your firm will have to face the prosecution or whatever the decision taken by the court and that's how you will land up into the losses basically any loss for any organization is not good whenever we start even a small idli shop or a small cafe or a small sandwich shop we expect some business out of that and if you you if you are a manager in a five star hotel and because you are not able to maintain the uh, certain conditions properly definitely uh, that is not good for the five star hotel as well as not good for the uh, 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 roadside uh, street vendor also because ultimately any business have a aim to earn profit okay so definitely this has up will tell us about the quality and also how to once quality is there once uh, we have a very good uh, continuous flow of production definitely it land up into the good profit and that's how we uh, the business become a sustainable business okay so we, you all are aware that hscp stands for hazard analysis critical control point i no need to explain you again but uh, keep this in your mind now you all will be facing interviews and uh, uh, you have to keep this in in a mind that they the interviewer may not ask only the full form of hasap they will ask further questions that how hasap was started how uh, you know, what are the seven principles what is the hasap team how they implement it all these things we are going to discuss now during this presentation and uh, so uh, just knowing a hazard analysis critical control point that is not enough to know about hscp okay so it's system which looks for a prevent potential problems before they happen basically uh, this has hscp one minute there is someone trying to get in okay somebody fine 
so we will continue with our presentation uh, so basically hscp uh, prevents the potential problems before they happen so that's how hazard the hazard is analyzed the analysis analyzed and then we try to prevent these hazards through critical control point ccp so that's how this hscp prevents potential problem before they happen that means uh, it, it the hasap will allow you to take precautions like uh, many or many a times in your earlier classes you studied that a food handler should have a less jewelry less jewelry means these are the guidelines given by the hscp to avoid any uh, falling of jewelry into the gravy into the rice into the vada batter and then it land up into the plate the uh, consumer's plate or the guest plate and then that embarrassment and all those things okay so this has a will tell you the exact critical control points and then we have to uh, prevent potential problems before they ha happen and then the other aim of the hasap is it is it can be used by the food companies to make sure they do not break any law or putting consumers at risk when producing food basically uh, the, the customers the ultimate users consumers are the uh, the best uh, uh, we 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 have to respect them and we have to protect them and we have to make them satisfy in any of the business if no takers are there in that case no business will be there okay so we have to safeguard our customer we have to make them more happy and we have to create repeat customers okay especially in food business if your quality is good your quantity is uh, value for money and uh, your service is also good definitely you have a repeat customers in that when we say quality quality is uh, quality will come out when you follow all procedures which are there in hasap as well as which are there in the uh, local uh, legal uh, framework okay so the hasap is a structured approach to risk assessment so basically it is defined in well in manner each stages each principles have defined well in manner manner where it assess the risk and then it it try to uh, avoid any issue so it assess the risk and the requirement or take appropriate action whenever it is uh, some food production line or chain is in risk okay so this is about hasap and now we will go with the further uh, uh, presentation about the uh, how the hasap involve in a food businesses okay so what does hasap involve how uh, this uh, work in the food businesses okay so what we do at the beginning as a manager as a executive chef at the top level management identifying points during the production of a product where potential hazards may occur okay so uh, you are executive chef and with the experience we learn hasap any executive chef uh, generally once a person passed out from a hotel management takes 7 to 8 years 10 years to become executive chef during his journey experience a person learn different different hasap principles and their uh, prerequisites and also how they are helpful to run a proper business so even when when an executive chef sit in the cabin that time also he think about the process how my raw material is coming in from where i am uh, re taking raw material what are the my re resources how i am receiving them where i am storing them who is issuing them from the store and then how uh, these are taken from the store to the kitchen in the kitchen where they are stored so all this is a process okay so during this process uh, how it is cooked how it is thought how it is uh, stored and then how it is how it goes for the service so has a start from the procurement till we serve food into the plate or platter okay so during this entire process uh, has a identifies the points uh, of different 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 food handling places or food handlers okay and identifies where potential hazard may occur and analyze the risk of hazard 
point happening including the scale of consequences if they do so basically the hazard i will give you an example ice cream we have procured from a supplier a vendor have traveled in a normal uh, vehicle um, normal tempo which is not a cold tempo and it, it is a just uh, uh, two minutes, two minutes or two kilometer distance from the vendors go down to the hotel uh, delivery station. Okay, so uh, so hazard here uh, you have to understand. If it is coming from ten kilometers, definitely we have to insist for cold van. So that is we understood the risk, and then we also put a control on that. That no, you cannot deliver. Uh, in a normal van from 10 kilometer distance. If it is just a half a kilometer distance, one kilometer distance, definitely uh, risk is there, but not that much. So uh, it is not going to be a big consequence because of this. So this uh, HSCCP understand uh, how much time period that ice cream is going to be at room temperature. And immediately after receiving another check is required we have to put them in a deep freezer immediately. Otherwise, if it is delivered, it was delivered at the uh, time uh, time gate or the receiving station and it was lying there for one hour and then ice cream will not remain ice cream. It will be a sauce, ice cream sauce. Okay, so uh, that is the, somebody is again coming in. I will just, okay. So dear students, that is the situation. Uh, that's how we put checks and also corrective actions into uh, all our activities. It, it is not one activity, it is a set of activity. That's why uh, these certain things, maintaining temperatures, maintaining personal hygiene, maintaining workplace hygiene, these are the common measures in the HACCP. Okay, so deciding which points are critical to the consumer safety. How much time we are going to keep a chicken, frozen chicken at room temperature, uh, so decide or once you receive immediately uh, transfer that into the walk-in cooler or the deep freezer. Okay, so that how much time we are going to do that while thawing also whether we are thawing in a hot water or we are thawing into the running water or we are thawing into the walk-in cooler. So all these things are uh, it is how much risk involved into that that analysis and then the uh, corrective action along with that. Okay, so that is that these things we learn from the HACCP. Implementing controls, monitoring production and taking action if necessary. So basically uh, we have to uh, different controls we have to put. The example we have taken as that ice cream. Uh, thus we can insist supplier first thing you come in the cold van. Deliver the ice cream in a cold van. If not possible what is the distance where you are storing where where uh, how much distance is from our kitchen okay so all these we have to review all the uh, systems all the uh, whether of our ingredients are coming from approved supplier if if i am purchasing uh, some chili powder or turmeric powder or some other powdered masala i have to i have i should go with a standard brand and also uh, where the adulteration is very less. So I am making sure I am reviewing my uh, purchase plan to go for the standard purchase or I have a standard purchase specifications. So I, I want uh, this pickle of Achi or pickle of a Praveen or uh, some spices of Everest. Okay, so that means I am making sure that the whatever raw material I am receiving, it should be of good quality and keep reviewing all HS, HSCCP once, once you got certified that doesn't mean that you have earned everything and now no need for improvement. We have to keep on reviewing and controlling the entire system. It is a teamwork, entire uh, uh, team members have to cooperate, the people who are all food handlers have to cooperate whether it is a service or food production area. Okay, so next is about the qualities of the HACCP system. So what are the qualities? So it is a systematic, efficient and on the spot. What is the beauty of the system? It is a very systematic, also simple. Only the thing, I, if you don't understand it properly, try to understand and 
think that you are a customer you are going to eat a particular food and then you take action accordingly think that you you are a vegetarian person pure vegetarian person in that case so how you are expecting from the kitchen whether it is a common kitchen veg non veg and you are pure vegetarian so all these things once you put yourself at the customers uh, place definitely whatever your expectations are the that you have to fulfill through this system that is hscp so it is a systematic simple which identifies the potential hazards before any problem occur and once you understood the problem after analysis once you understood the problem definitely you have to take efficient corrective action okay so that is the beauty quality of the system hscp system is a systematic efficient it concentrates on controlling effort at the stages where the risk potentially at the highest level so uh, whenever we deal with a frozen product we we uh, continuous check on the uh, walk in temperatures as well as deep freezer temperatures are required uh, efficient that efficiently then we have to we are expected to clean our utensils properly sanitize them what kind of a sanitation uh, because this cross contamination may happen there so all these uh, everywhere it is uh, well defined and that's how it become efficient and on the spot if in case something goes wrong the corrective action to be taken by the competent team member if you are a sous chef you are a chef the party of a section and you understood that this uh, chicken was kept at room temperature for 4 hours so that you don't take it and cook again and serve if it is 4 hours kept at room temperature and uh, uh, if you are uh, sorry I, I was using the cooked chicken uh, the boiled chicken uh, which is kept for the sandwich it was kept at room temperature for uh, 4 hours don't use that one take a fresh chicken boil it and use it otherwise boiled chicken allow it to cool it down and then put it into the walk-in cooler or refrigerator uh, somebody uh, Harish Harish, please Harish mute. mute yourself. Mute, mute yourself. One minute, if I can mute. Uh, I, I muted him. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Harish. Okay. So, quality. So, on the spot, wherever, whichever situation we come across, it is going out of control. Uh, we have to bring the situation under control. So, milk. Uh, kept at room temperature for longer period boil it and uh, because it was at room temperature for uh, two hours three hours it may have developed bacterial growth bacterial load and uh, if you boil it if it is not curdled, it is good so every every stage you have a, a, a corrective action on the spot if you have received received something frozen at a receiving area definitely put that into the uh, refrigeration okay so that is the uh, uh, on the spot action so that is about the these are the qualities of the HACCP system is systematic efficient and on the spot you can take corrective action how it is helped to the food businesses it is a method which food businesses can use ensure that their products do not put customers at risk that is the ultimate aim of the HACCP we we uh, uh, try to safeguard our customers we would like to have repeat customers we would like to serve them again and again and also as a food business uh, personnel i would like to earn profit from these repeat customers okay so we don't put our customers at risk and that's how this system help us in that the details of the hcc system system may will vary as no two businesses are exactly alike but principles are the same so dear student understand HACCP is used in the dairy technology it is used in the food processing businesses it is it is used in the catering businesses it is used in the restaurant businesses and also it is used in the airline and everywhere so HACCP is widely used two businesses are not exactly same 
like airline catering and the catering for the uh, a function these two caterings are not same at all both the places we are producing food we are cooking food we are storing them but these are not the same thing okay so understand that airline catering definitely food is cooked uh, cooled down then portioned out then packed then stored in a cold, a cold temperature and then after 7 8 hours it is transported to the aircraft and then reheated and then served after maybe 10 hours 15 hours after cooking okay so that is understand the businesses are not same whereas in the catering business the food is cooked at the corner and it is served immediately hot food to all the patrons or the guests okay so dear student the all businesses are not exactly same but all businesses are producing food and they are serving food and that's how this hscp is different for the different different businesses okay it it change it change itself according to the kind of a business that is getting implemented so principles these seven principles are same for all businesses okay so again why hscp see in india to have a food business you need fssai license whereas uh, for international clients like i was mentioning airline catering if uh, a uh, chennai based airline caterer is catering to 10 international flights definitely 10 international flight will not go to the one country they one will go to germany another will go to uh, new uh, usa one will go to london one will go to uganda one will go to sri lanka one will go to thailand okay so all different places and the different geographical locations and this what they expect they don't expect this uh, international carriers they don't expect a company who is an fssci because once they leave our country fssci is not effective whereas they expect hscp entire world started believing that the con company which have a hscp certification and follow all rules and regulations procedures definitely they produce quality food that is an assumption and it, it have proved correct in all the business transactions okay so if you want to have international clients with you international people at your organization eating them they find they they, they they also this international people they see whether you are hscp certified okay so that's how this hscp certification help us getting international business and locally also definitely people uh, uh, believe that uh, HACCP certified firms, manufacturing units are, uh, uh, they are producing a quality good and they are safe to consume. Okay, so the next uh, in the HACCP we start with the hazard. So hazard uh, is like a biological, chemical, physical agent that is reasonably like to cause illness, injury or absence of its control okay in in the absence of control so whenever there is no control like i was giving giving an example a jewelry uh, jewelry you have uh, two rings in your have fingers and by mistake one ring have fallen into the gravy and that uh, chicken makhan wala have gone to for the service and it went into the teeth and that's how it it causes injury to the first person who is consuming that okay because you were wearing ring two to ring that too with some diamond stone diamond stone definitely it will break teeth and if it is consumed then it is very hazardous uh, it is uh, so think about it this is a physical hazard what i discussed is about physical hazard if by mistake some chemical got poured inside the uh, piesum okay and without noticing the chemical, the floor cleaning chemical was kept on the upper shelf and your piesum was stored at the lower shelf. So, uh, by mistake, a uh, few drops got poured into that and we are serving piesum cold. And that's how uh, it, it have gone for the service. People ate and people started vomiting and uh, diarrhea. Okay, so see the situation. That is the chemical which is not supposed to be in the food product. How? Uh, 
uh, got into the food product and that have caused illness or injury uh, when the control was not there we are not supposed to store chemicals and uh, ready to eat food together that is the what HACCP teaches okay expect us to do okay so though uh, uh, this uh, HACCP the, that is the chemicals which are not supposed to be there in the food got into the food are chemical hazards and the very very important what we are facing now is a biological uh, why we are separated why we connected through this uh, virtual media is because of one virus known as corona okay so these um, viruses like a corona bacteria like a, uh, salmonella or uh, algae these are the biological threats, the pathogenic bacteria, pathogenic microorganisms which are present there in the food in lesser quantity. They grow rapidly at room temperature and they produce some chemicals which will cause the diarrhea, omitting, abdominal pain, body pain, fever, all these symptoms is because of this biological hazard. So, dear student, understand the hazards in the food which cause illness or injury because of microorganism are biological hazard whereas because of the chemical those are chemical hazards and because of the physical presence of stone glass or uh, any of the material which is not supposed to be there are the physical hazards and this hazard refers to the conditions or contaminants in the food that can cause illness Okay, so basically any hazard uh, which creates illness or injury to the human being is an hazard. So students understand HACCP starts with the hazard and you should know about biological hazard, chemical hazard and physical hazards. Same thing explained in this slide, I will not uh, repeat it again. The types of hazard, biological hazard, harmful microorganisms, we have to bring this microbial load which is safe to the human being. See, this especially by biological hazard, I would like to say here that 99.99% microorganisms in this world, 0.01% other things, we are human being in that 0.01%. So understand this uh, 0.01, that many bacteria are there among that harmful bacteria are there which cause illness to the human being among that this corona is there which causes illness illness okay so harmful microorganisms are biological hazards the chemicals sometimes naturally occurring chemicals inside the food which gives a rotten rotten smell or uh, anything the bacteria produces chemicals inside the food and unintentionally chemicals gets added into the food. There was a case around uh, four or five years back in Bihar, the midday meal, school children had midday meal and few children died. Very tragedy uh, case because uh, the oil prepared for preparing that khichdi was stored into the fertilizer can or the that uh, pesticide can, sorry not fertilizer, pesticide can. And that's how these pesticides got mixed into the oil and that oil was used for cooking khichdi and that's how these chemical hazards can lead to the death. So this is a chemical hazard. Uh, getting your uh, uh, washing uh, excess amount of uh, uh, washing soap inside the uh, gravy or in the curry or anything. So that is also a chemical hazard and physical hazard definitely glass, stone, metal, uh, these can be the physical hazard and the packaging quality, quality is not good, uh, that also can lead to uh, the physical hazard or because if packaging is not good, the physical coverings, casings may fall into the food and that may contaminate. The equipment reliability, sometimes equipments are of not good quality, uh, some of the mincers, Fryers, they keep on leaving some chemicals, metals, oxides. So that also uh, uh, form, that is also a kind of a hazard. Okay, so students, you must have understood the different types of hazard in that three hazards are important. 
biological hazard, chemical hazard and physical hazards. So now we understood hazard and now we will go ahead with the critical control points. A critical control point CCP is an identifiable point in the production chain where hazard may occur. Okay, dear student, these critical control points are identifiable. This is very, very important. Something which we cannot identify, some chemical reaction or the nutrients into that or what is the energy uh, calories going to be there. These are these points, the critical control points are basically identifiable. We can identify them and also we can rectify them. Okay, so that is the critical control point. Then uh, the action can be taken to prevent these hazards from occurring. So action definitely earlier we have explained so many examples. Uh, actions are like the, the boiled chicken was kept at room temperature for longer period, throw it out, take fresh chicken or you, you, you are the food and beverage manager and you have food coming back from the restaurant. So, so from the buffet, definitely the food came in contact with the guest, with the different people, do not put them back. The food which is kept as a backup, definitely that can be reused, but the food which was on the buffet and uh, many people have handled uh, the tongs, forks or uh, uh, whatever the ladle you have kept along with that they have handled. Definitely whatever comes from the buffet, please don't use it for recycling. Put it for the another, uh, if, it, if, you, if you can transfer immediately that to the staff cafeteria, that is fine, but don't store them again and reuse them. Okay, so the, that's how we transmit, we gather all bacteria together, we store that and we allow bacteria to grow and then we serve them again. That is very, uh, that is very dangerous con condition. Okay, so we know action, which food is to be taken back to the kitchen and which food is to be discarded. Okay, so the action to be taken to prevent hazard from occurring. This can either be a point, step, procedure at which control can be applied. So uh, basically to eliminate or prevent hazard uh, to acceptable level. Now student understand here, uh, when, when I gave an example of a milk, milk was at room temperature, then we boiled and we understood it is not uh, getting curdled and we accept that that can be cooled and kept into the walk-in. Uh, walk-in fridge or refrigerator again so we bring the hazard we reduce the uh, 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 severity of the hazard we by boiling we try to kill bacteria uh, we try to uh, uh, keep the food outside danger zone and once bacteria maximum bacteria are got killed we bring that into the acceptable level okay so that is the Somebody is at this point, somebody is trying to come in. Okay, Jayant ready. Okay, fine. Uh, we will go ahead with our presentation. So, dear student, uh, this uh, 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 we, we, uh, uh, we take action to prevent the hazard from occurring, and uh, this can either be a point or a step or procedure. Uh, CCP can be used to control uh, more than one hazard uh, and it, it is not one control point. Many a times several control points would be there. The several control points means once we receive chicken, first check temperature while receiving, that is critical control point. Then put that into the refrigerated, if it is acceptable level of the uh, temperature, put that into once we receive appropriate quantity, appropriate temperature, appropriate quality, put that into the frozen uh, uh, deep freezer. So that is another control point. When you take it out, thaw it properly into the uh, walk-in cooler, that is another control point. Or thaw that into the uh, running water, that is another control point. Cook that properly till the central point of the chicken, the central uh, the center of the chicken piece, meat piece gets the 
temperature above 63 degrees Celsius. Okay, why we say 63 degrees Celsius? Because we have a danger zone from 5 degrees Celsius to 63 degrees Celsius. So, whichever meat you are cooking, make sure your temperature is above 63 degrees Celsius. Okay, because sometimes this frozen meat, what happens? It is cooked from outside and it is not cooked at the center. That is the most dangerous thing. So, uh, to avoid any hazard, we try to apply several CCPs. I gave an example, different CCPs, critical control points. Okay, point may be identified as CCP when hazard can be prevented. So, uh, a hazard can be, uh, if it is, we understood that this is going to happen, uh, we can prevent the hazard. The introduction of chemical residue can be prevented by control at the receiving stage. So basically, we, uh, European countries, what they do from India, they don't accept anything easily. They try to check the fertilizer residue. They try to check the chemical residue in the vegetables, in the food grains, whatever they are importing. So like that, if we choose the appropriate supplier, appropriate brands, definitely we can reduce the chemical residue. If we if we uh, take a good quality turmeric powder, definitely that sawdust or the uh, adulterants will not be there into the uh, this uh, turmeric powder. Okay, so take uh, to prevent any. Uh, um, any of the hazard we should purchase from the appropriate uh, suppliers. The chemical hazard can be prevented by control at the formulation or integration addition stage. Basically, we have a separate um, uh, chemical storage, we have a separate food storage, uh, chemicals and foods to be stored separately. When we clean them, that time our cooking uh, preparation should not happen there, let the cleaning happen, let the sanitizing happen and then we can go ahead with the uh, our preparations. Okay, or the deep cleaning can be done during night time when uh, kitchen operations are not going on. Okay, so the chemical, this way chemical hazards can be avoided. Pathogenic bacteria growth can be controlled by refrigerated storage or chilling. You should have a good refrigeration control, you should have walk-in cooler, chillers and maintain their temperature properly and these temperatures to be noted down at least once in a day or once in a per, per shift. The temperature of refrigerator between 2 to 4 degrees Celsius, the deep freezer minus 18 degrees Celsius. Any other variation you have, please make sure as an executive chef, make sure that your refrigerators are functioning properly, your fridges are functioning properly, your chillers are functioning properly and their temperatures are noted down at least once in a shift, once in a day. Okay, so these are the CCPs. CCP may be identified where hazards can be eliminated. So basically, uh, hazards can be eliminated. Uh, so like here example given pathogenic bacteria, harmful bacteria can be killed during cooking. So what example I was giving, the center of the meat piece should have 63 degrees Celsius temperature or more than that. So to, uh, to uh, find out that, we will not go inside and find out. So we have a, a temperature probe or the food probe and put that inside, insert it and find out what is the temperature at the center of the meat. When we bake uh, meat or we roast meat that time this is very important now in this picture what is shown a chef is measuring temperature of a pasta some pasta is there and he is measuring temperature so he is trying to find out whether this pasta boiling when we say boil that means definitely the temperature is more than 100 degrees celsius okay so this can be detected noted down by a, a supervising authority Okay, and parasites can be killed by freezing. If the food is uh, ready, we can freeze them, freeze it for uh, appropriate temperature and the uh, most of the bacteria may also get killed. And this CCP uh, may be identified, the points may be identified as a CCP where hazards reduce to the acceptable level. Basically, we have to bring this uh, uh, bring 
the things under control and the, we have to bring them under acceptable level. If bacteria are there, uh, if curry is kept at room temperature for 2 hours, definitely boil that nicely and we will bring that at acceptable level. So, bacteria can be brought to the acceptable level. Okay. So, occurrence of foreign objects can be minimized by the manual sorting automatic collectors. Okay. So, uh, the manual sorting means uh, you, you have a grains and you have a stones into that. So, manual sorting out is required. So, we'll sort it out and then send these grains for the milling. Okay. Or you have uh, rice for the boiling. Wash rice nicely two times, three times. That means all polishing will go. All chemical, uh, chemical supplied to that will go. It will get washed out properly and then put it for uh, boiling. Okay. So, the manual uh, sorting or grading or automatic collection is required. Some biological chemical hazards can be minimized by obtaining shellfish or seafood from the approved waters, approved suppliers. What they mean here, sometimes some water bodies, lakes, rivers are the poisonous in nature because of the excess use of fertilizers, chemicals, pesticides uh, in the farming or in the surrounding area. So, better to uh, get the your seafood from the proper uh, suppliers or the approved waters, approved suppliers. Okay, so this is about the HECCP. So, dear students, I, I will, we will not leave the class. Uh, we will just take three minutes break. All of you, now it is 15, uh, 02. We will take three minutes break and then I will join you again. If you have, uh, if you can have water or anything, I will also have water and quickly I will join you back. We will not leave this class, let it be as it is. Okay, another three minutes. Prashant. Thank you students. I think uh, all, all are back. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, now we will go ahead with the presentation because still we have a uh, lot of slides and explanations. I want to finish them and then I would like to interact with you people. Okay, so history that we, what we understood in the earlier session is about uh, HACCP, its significance, importance, significance of hazard. Uh, what are different types of hazard and then also uh, what are the different con critical control points that much we understood and we will start now with the history of HACCP. 
so now can someone tell me what is nasa in this group if someone can answer what is uh, nasa okay so uh, let it be i will i will go ahead with the explanation so dear student here in the history nasa national uh, aeronautics sorry i also forgot the national aeronautics for space administration okay so it is an american agency which works on space whereas in, in the indian counterpart is the isro uh indian space and research organization isro indian space research organization okay so isro is the indian counterpart whereas nasa is an american agency which works for the uh, space research so national aeronautics and space administration so nasa is a popular organization and they wanted to produce food for the astronauts the people who go into the space for the research those are astronauts so astronauts to guarantee food safety sometimes these astronauts go to the space for uh, maybe a year maybe a two year maybe a five years and sometimes very less time period so 1959 uh, between 1959 to 1960 nasa wanted to produce uh, assured a uh, safe food for these astronauts because generally they go into the space and uh, there they have to keep their energy up and the sufficient food uh, for them okay so that was the initial requirement and uh, then uh, this uh, they, that during 59 to 60 they formed a certain guidelines or specifications for the uh, food producer or manufacturer who can produce in that particular manner produce food for the astronauts and these guidelines uh, were taken by world health organization uh, uh, and uh, issued this hccp principles seven principles we are going to study these principles are incorporated into the codex alimentarius so 1963 who uh this uh, they they put this hccp principles into the codex alimentarius so codex Al codex alimentarius is nothing but a, a collection of internationally recognized standards for the food manufacturers okay so which 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 speak about the food safety uh the guidelines and related activities so codex alimentarius is a document produced by world health organization and that have accepted hccp principles in 1963 1973 uh, again the nasa american army laboratory and pillsbury uh, group of company they uh, had a common project for producing food for the astronaut and that's how pillsbury company the uh, renowned company food group came into the picture in 1973 and they implemented has some guidelines also they improved on the guidelines in 1985 usa national science academy suggested that hasab should be applied in food operation for food safety so it was recommendation given earlier 1959 to 60 it was only for the food production for the astronauts 1985 this was recommended for the all food businesses food operations in the country okay so in 1973 uh, uh, it become a mandatory for the low acid can food the the ph level is below 4.6 low acid uh, for them it become uh, mandatory then 1997 it became mandatory for the seafood 1998 this has up guidelines became the uh, mandatory for large meat and poultry manufacturer one year later even for the small meat poultry manufacture why this these get get got implemented is because uh, people they they uh, they could see the difference that if we implement these guidelines hccp 
principles definitely we have a quality product and the 1999 itself it it made mandatory for the frozen and desert manufacturers because this also we produce we frozen them and we store them and then we transport them and then it is served okay so uh, that was the journey of the hscp which started from the uh, 1959 to 60 by nasa for producing foods for the astronauts and in 2000 uh, it became mandatory for small meat and poultry manufacturers also in 2002 the juice hscp regulation begins mandatory for the processors small businesses and very small businesses also so uh, by 2002 it was accepted by almost all countries and all international standards organization so dear student that is the history about hscp definitely keep this in your mind the, the interviewers may ask you how nasa uh, have used hscp for producing food for whom producing to for whom producing food or uh, uh, they how it was started which year it was started then who accepted these guidelines first so basically uh, 1959 60 nasa to produce food for the astronaut they came with some guidelines and that is called as hscp then it was uh, accepted by the world health organization and got adapted into the Codex Alimentarius and then it became uh, accepted by different different agencies. Okay, so students now this is a core of the HACCP, the seven principles of HACCP implementation. So the first stage what we, uh, what we can get from the name itself is the first stage, first principle is the hazard analysis. So hazard analysis. The second principle is determine the critical control point. In our earlier talk also I discussed about the critical control point. Uh, we have to understand the uh, identifiable point where uh, it can be uh, corrected or controlled. So I will just read out and then in detail discussion is there in the further coming slides. So basically the first principle is hazard analysis second principle is determine the critical control point third principle establish critical limits the fourth one is critical control point monitoring once you have determined then establish limit and then monitor and then take corrective action then establish verification procedure checking temperatures uh, serving food at appropriate temperature uh, cooking them uh, in a right manner, having good hygienic practices and we have to keep on verifying uh, the, these practices Okay, and keep a record of that, whether the refrigerator temperatures are appropriate. So have a log, maintain temperature once in a shift, once in a day. So that is the record keeping. So dear student, let us discuss this each principle in detail. The hazard analysis. The first step involves identifying any hazard that must be prevented, eliminated to uh, or reduced to the acceptable levels. Already we have discussed all these points hazard analysis. So this again the first thing is uh, the understanding what kind of a hazard can be there. Whether it is a biological hazard, whether it is a chemical hazard or whether it is a uh, physical hazard. So all the hazards we have to prevent. We have to keep food, hot food into above 63 degrees Celsius, thumb rule, the cold food below 4 degrees Celsius. That is we avoid microbial uh, growth there. Then we have to another physical hazards we, how we can avoid. We have to uh, make sure that foods are covered. We have to make sure the employees are having less jewelry. We have to make sure that uh, food is stored in a right container. If it is the container is getting reacted with the uh, food and then producing some chemicals inside. So th that's how we avoid chemicals and chemicals are separate, stored separated. So that's how 
once we understand this is a place critical place for the particular hazard we have to analyze that find out the point so that is about the hazard analysis second principle of the hccp is the determined critical control point identifying critical control point at the steps at which control is essential to prevent or eliminate a hazard or reduce acceptable level uh, plenty of examples are there different cctvs uh, ccps different control points will be there uh, in any of the kitchen operations simultaneously we have to apply control so simultaneously what we can say procure raw material from the approved supplier then receive them at appropriate time and appropriate temperature then store them at appropriate uh, temperature at appropriate place ventilated place places free from pests and the rodents and other things okay so all these simultaneously all uh, things are under control and then issue them properly cook them properly and then serve in a sanitized plate sanitized bowl and serve them in a right manner to the guest okay so we we understand different different control points the temperatures the cleanliness uh, the cleanliness about workplace cleanliness about the equipment the personal hygiene uh, then cleanliness about the employees all these things are the part of the critical control points and there we have to emphasize that's why your teacher when you enter a practical room they ask whether you are shaved whether your uniform is clean whether uh, you are wearing chef cap okay so all these are critical control points and those are to be implemented if you have a very good cleaned uniform that means you are your personal hygiene is good you are taking daily bath you are wearing chef coat you are wearing chef cap so all these things try to avoid future consequences okay so these are the that is the next principle determine the critical control point third point is establish critical limit in case in case the temperature is getting varied so establish the temperature can be between 2 degree celsius to 4 degree celsius the hot food temperature can be between 63 degree celsius to 70 degree celsius 85 degree celsius okay because 100 degree celsius again it will start boiling and it will lose moisture that also we don't want so the temperature so critical limit we have we can say whenever we check temperature it should be between 63 to 85 degrees celsius buffet is there so buffet you have put sambar you have put chutney you have put idli idli temperature can be between 63 to 70 degrees celsius sambar temperature is around 85 degrees celsius chutney temperature should be below 5 degrees celsius because chutney is not cooked it is just mixed okay so all these critical limits we have to set critical limits the employee every day morning a employee should get a clean uniform critical limit don't have same stinking uniform again and again it is our management duty to make sure that uniforms clean iron uniforms are provided to all employees okay so critical limits we are establishing so it is in order to prevent eliminate uh, or reduce hazard to an acceptable level we have to uh, we have to put critical limits that is the principle number three if employees are not there bath is not our control but we can train them we can insist for but what uh, organization can make sure that they can make sure that they get a clean washed iron uniform daily okay so this is an um, critical uh, establishment of the critical limits then critical control point and we have to monitor them so the principle four is monitoring the pr principle three is understanding limits and then monitoring wherever monitoring is required so refrigerators and deep freezers the temperature sometimes because of the electrical fault mechanical fault this temperature keep on varying so sometimes if it is going uh, around 12 degrees celsius 15 degrees celsius that means it is malfunctioning the, so we have to keep monitoring so that's why once a shift or once in a day somebody should come there and note down 
at morning 7 o'clock the temperature of refrigerator was 2 degree celsius 1 degree celsius 4 degree celsius okay so that monitoring is required which helps us to accurate record for the future in future if somebody claims that uh, because of the food i ate at your place uh, i got an infection and i land up into the hospital so these records of maintaining temperatures records of maintaining cleanliness records of uh, maintaining um, providing good uniforms uh, different different training schedules all these records help us to face the uh, legal suit or anything people who have gone to the court these are the records okay so temperature record or the buffet uh, time record all these records the uh, physical documentation uh, is the monitoring procedure and in case something goes wrong what corrective action is taken so i we have asked for the red chili powder degi mirch red chili powder and it is something local made or loose you have received so what corrective action you have taken you have returned because it is not from the approved supplier not approved brand you have returned so corrective action the milk was got curdled milk kept at room temperature for longer period and we boiled we understood that it got curdled so it is not to be used we thrown it out corrective action take fresh milk boil it and use for the your purpose okay so corrective action the same milk was not used for making milkshake okay so milkshake or tea or coffee anything so corrective action specifically if uh, seafood is not thawed properly thaw it properly and then use don't be in hurry okay so all these corrective actions are procedures to be followed when hazard is identified in a food production area the aim is to correct and eliminate the cause of hazard but wherever you come across the fifth principle of HACCP, take correct action, anything. So any executive chef, that's why to become an executive chef, it takes five to six years, 10 years time to learn the specifications about all these procedures, understand CCPs, understand limits, understand the corrective action to be taken in case it goes wrong. Okay. So, uh, before otherwise if you don't take corrective action definitely it will land up into the uh, some issue in future okay so example of corrective action here are isolating and holding product for safety evaluation basically uh, keeping them separate uh, the meat to be stored separate seafood to be stored separate vegetables to be stored, stored separate then fruits to be stored separate in a proper container, labeled properly, even date wise, everything recorded on that. Okay, so all these isolating, don't put everything together and dump into the refrigerator. Okay, so that is not good procedure or keep uh, ready to eat food on higher shelf and the raw food at lower shelf. This is also a corrective action. Then diverting the affected product or ingredient to another line where deviation would not be considered critical. Like you you have a uh, you have a milk or you, you sorry you have a uh, chicken uh, which you immediately you would like to uh, use. So the thawed chicken should not be thawed uh, frozen again. Okay, thawed chicken should not be frozen. So utilize that or some food you have leftover food received from the buffet deviate that towards the uh, uh, crew mess or the staff cafeteria so that's how people will consume and it will get finished don't store them and so that's how this affected ingredients can be deviated to the appropriate another line where it is not considered critical so reprocessing destroying if it is reprocessing possible boiling milk is possible or destroying throwing out milk is possible these are the corrective action can be taken in this kind of a situation the next principle is a verification process the verification procedures are those activities other than monitoring ccps okay basically uh, this verification uh, we we check we check whether we have 
uh, understood CCPs and then we have done any whether they were in limit. If they were not in limit, then what action is taken? Okay, so somebody at higher level should verify. If the uh, app approved supplier have not supplied particular branded item, raw material, in that case, what are alternative, whether that is acceptable, uh, why that is happening, all these verifications. Then uh, chef should check whether the temperatures are noted down for all buffet, all refrigerator, all deep freezer. If chef checks once in a day, and if it is not done, chef will ask particular sous chef or she, chef the party that please do it. Please do it. It is a mandatory. It is a requirement. So verification process. So who will do? Generally, uh, at higher manager level, they do all these verifications. Okay. And usually, this is usually completed when system fails or there is a significant change in the product process. So this verification is done uh, when they see a. Uh, uh, for raw material bills are of higher uh, uh, value or lesser value or anything, any variation they come across uh, in a particular or more complaints are coming, people are not uh, coming back again, all these things are there in that case this verification process is applied. Okay, so the next is the last principle of HACCP is record keeping, very very important records of all purchases, records of all the temperature logs, buffet temperature logs, tempera buffet timings, the food service timing, food cooking temperatures, each and every thing have a logs. Okay, so cleaning log, how frequently the kitchens are got cleaned, how frequently deep cleaning is taken place, at what uh, since morning sanitizing temperature we have a you pot wash and plate wash area and there we have a wash rinse sanitize uh, sinks three sink unit in the sink well, sanitize sink what was the strength of the chlorine so that is also a record to be maintained okay so all these things are the part of the record keeping procedures of HACCP wherever it is required those records to be prepared stored and kept for the verification okay so documentation and record keeping help to demonstrate the effective implementation if some record is not available that means at that particular place the systems are not implemented the temperature logs are not maintained the um, uh, chlorine concentration is not maintained or the receiving procedures are wrong if records are not there that means there is something wrong so that's how this record help management to have a proper CCP plan, monitor them and take corrective actions or verification activities. So the last principle was uh, record keeping. So dear student, I am just going back reading again seven very, very important principles of HACCP are hazard analysis, determine the critical control point, establish critical limits and then uh, monitor them take corrective action and then verification process we have to establish verification process and at the last we have the record keeping record of all the activities that we have done in entire food chain activity okay so what are different records it may be a support document for developing plan it may be a different ccp is pointed out different corrective actions taken out and verification activities. So CCPs, we, are, we, we have a control critical control point that the frozen temperature should be received frozen, critical control point. If temperature is high, temperature is uh, the limits we established, we should not receive chicken uh, minus more than minus 12 degrees Celsius. The temperature was received at 5 degrees Celsius, sorry, the chicken was received at 5 degrees Celsius. So the corrective action taken returned back and somebody have very must be verified. Okay. So all these records, the return of the chicken will not be very easy task. Some record we have to create, we have to say this temperature is above 12 degree, minus 12 degrees Celsius. Okay. So these records, uh, so all these records we have to keep and we have to review HACCP uh, time to time. The design and running of HACCP scheme 
should be revised whenever food operation is altered sometimes we we have a daily we have food production for 1000 people and one day you have a 10000 people and continuously you started producing for 5000 people so variations are there you have a different different kitchen operations different different, different equipments and new people joined in, in your team so definitely you have to alter or review the uh, revise the hscp plan okay the scheme should be reviewed from time to time at least once in a year uh, uh, take a review of the entire situation and alter accordingly okay so that is the review of hscp the last uh, we are in the last uh, few slides of the presentation dear students now we understood the hscp what it stands for the hazards are the biological chemical physical hazards and also it is represented in the uh, pictorial form here and the critical control points are we have to identify them we have to limit the uh, critical uh, point what can be the limit so very good example i gave you limit can be uh, for the physical hazards limit can be uh, employed should not have any jewelry or should not should be in a proper uniform that is these are the limit if somebody is coming in with a heavy jewelry definitely uh, executive chef sous chef or chef the party should not allow particular employee to come with a heavy jewelry in the kitchen that is very uh, uh, that is going beyond control uh, in in the perspective of the food safety okay so this we discussed this slide again no need to discuss again we have discussed now the the very important thing we understood the significance of hscp we understood what are the crit critical control points we understood the seven principles of hscp now we have a HSC, we should understand hscp plan so how it is to be implemented in a particular organization we need a team of people who can work for the hscp a team of individual within the company and the assistance uh, either it can have a, within the company generally in a five star hotel a executive chef who is the uh, who who is the expert person internal person who can lead the team otherwise if it is the people who are in the company or organization are not trained properly uh, organizations are there and they can assist providing their assistance to get this hscp implemented it is not for the certification it is for the quality production and the for the uh, the consumer safety for the food safety so basically this team conduct five prelim preliminary steps applies to the seven principles so we we understood significance we understood seven principles of hscp and there are five stages or five steps which this team of hscp will apply uh, in a uh, to implement hscp system so let us student let us understand these steps so these five steps are there collect the hscp resources assemble the hscp team that is the step one first we have to uh, gather the hscp team as uh, gather as many materials and documents related to food safety as well as assemble a team to represent different sectors within the industry so basically those who are associated with the food uh, form a team with the, these people and gather maximum documentation on hscp one hscp coordinator among that like that i i have explained a executive chef can be a hscp coordinator with HSCP skills should be chosen. So he is the person who deals maximum with the food and his team deals with maximum with the food. So uh, he can be or she can be a HSCP coordinator. Other member do not need HSCP skills to be on a team. So other member, anyone other person can be from engineering, from the production, from the service, from the sanitation, from the quality assurance, from the laboratory. All these can be a part of HSCP team. Uh, larger companies can have a team of seven to eight people whereas smaller can have 
four to five people representing all sections associated to the pool. So that is the assembly of the HACCP team and the coordinator should, coordinator should have a responsibility for the whole HACCP program and to be a team leader. Okay, so generally this uh, executive chef or the whosoever is a leader how is aware about the different different critical situations and hazards and they have to identify the they have to implement the HACCP. So the team the first stage is HACCP team assembly of the HACCP team. Second step is describe the product and its methods of distribution. So what we are going to produce or what we are going to receive. So the, the step can contain short description how process happens. So if I say a sandwich preparation, sandwich preparation, I have we, we will have a description. We receive a bread, we received vegetables and we received butter and other things that we store it. Then we uh, reissue them into the kitchen people. Then kitchen people, they open a packet. So they, they apply butter, they put seasoning, they cut vegetables, put into that and they put it into the plate. So this is a simple explanation of the process. If one example like that, uh, chicken curry will have different exam uh, uh, flow uh, uh, ice cream will have different flow okay so uh, these steps to be documented how it happens and this will help to minimize the potential hazard and once we have a uh, plan ready definitely we can identify the hazards to describe the product the company should answer following questions so these are very important questions uh, to describe particular product. What is the common name, description, process of description, how it is to be used. So uh, in case of processed food, this question is required, how it is to be used, the type of packaging used, the length of shelf life at what temperature. So maybe a shelf life at uh, 5 degrees Celsius, 4 degrees Celsius is 5 days, whereas room temperature only 2 days. Okay, so that all the things we have to answer, where it will be used, label instructions, a special distribution control required, special distribution control, ice creams uh, to be transported in a cold van and to be kept minus 18 degrees Celsius. So these are the special requirements during transportation. Step three, uh, develop a complete list of ingredient and raw material, whatever raw material and list of ingredients that are going to be used in this entire process. Uh, we have to generate an exhaustive list uh, material which help us to, uh, in that the, again we have to identify them whether the particular products are um, uh, have a potential hazard. So product, mean, meat ingredients, not non-meat ingredients, restricted ingredients, packaging materials, casing, all these we have to segregate them, list, prepare a very nice exhaustive list so whatever meat ingredient we are receiving definitely that receiving can be separate their handling can be separate uh, then non-meat ingredient maybe a gr food grains maybe a spices maybe vegetables fruits all these to be separated okay so uh, and what are the restricted ingredients what is not supposed to be there if that is coming that we have to identify and keep it separated so restricted ingredients packaging material how packaging you are expecting whether it is a 5 kg packing 2 kg packing what kind of packaging material whether it is a gunny bag or plastic containers or what it is so all these things we have to list down develop a complete ingredient list and a raw material list the step four is a flow diagram flow diagram here in the screen dear student you can understand the flow diagram where receiving is there uh, and then further processes are there and CCPs are identified and their limits also formed. So make a process flow diagram that identifies steps used to prepare product from receiving through a final shipment. So generally for a hoteliers this starts at the receiving because we are not there in the agriculture field or not there in the transportation or storage of that. Once the ingredients are received at our receiving station, from there it starts flow charge to the time, till the time we serve that particular food to the customer or our client or our guest. Okay, so that is the flow of the uh, ingredients. So that is the flow of work. 
so here example chicken fried chicken example is given anyway these notes this presentation i will share with you people and definitely you will go through here after receiving how it is stored how it is cooked different temperatures and then ccps and then control on ccp all that descripted into the particular flow chart after the flow diagram is created it should be confirmed uh, by waiting walking through the plant to make so this is associated with the plant definitely once it is ready at the end uh, experienced chef can assess whether a particular final dish is perfect or not and whether it have passed all quality checks or not the step 5 meet requirements for sanitation this is very very important <coughs> good hygienic practices good sanitary sanitary practices are very very important for factories uh, five star kitchens as well as the uh, street side vendors also so that's how the good sanitary practices guarantees you production of a safe food okay maintain good sanitation is an excellent foundation for building hccp plan so basically your building should be equipped for good drainages good uh, <coughs> garbage segregation garbage disposal handling garbage properly uh, having good uh, workflow uh, trained staff for the hygiene and sanitation all that things that gives you guarantee that is the step five and also uh, plant management or kitchen management kitchen operation can successfully implement the SHSP. so when you have good hygienic good sanitary practices definitely the your plant your organization can implement hscp in a perfect manner okay so this was about the hscp significance of hscp uh, then uh, what are the different critical control points seven principles and five steps to implement hscp in any organization and there are companies there are firms available in the market uh, which uh, uh, gives us consultancy for getting hscp implemented because hscp once hscp certified firm means they produce quality goods quality food products okay so that is understood and if you go for the international market definitely this hscp will help us to get more clients so and definitely once we have more business more volume of business definitely a firm organization can earn more profit so these are the some of the companies internationally they uh, help uh, help companies help uh, kitchen organizations help food businesses to get it certified the ssgs or internationally international alliance or the facility certification institutes or food safety management these are the firms uh, which help any organization uh, to implement HACCP. They guide the people, they have expert people with them. They guide all levels of the people, whether it is a entry level, middle management level or management level. They have expertise with them and they try to help the companies to implement HACCP and produce quality food and produce, earn more profit, get more clients. Okay. So, this is about the food safety, the HACCP is about the food safety, the safe food, more volume of business, more clients coming to the, your particular organization and any chef will have food safety is the first priority and uh, you also as a student of the uh, food production area or the hotel management, you also as a learner, as a practitioner, you also should have a first priority as a food safety. When we say food safety as a first priority, few things come in picture that is HACCP. Another internationally recognized standard is ISO 22000. There are very less differentiations between HACCP and ISO 22000. Okay, and the national level in India, the standard is FSSAI food safety and standards authority of india okay so these are the uh, so the fssai 
is mandatory HACCP and ISO 22000. These are the voluntary standards. If, if you don't have, then also fine. But if you have, it is more appropriate. Now, student, this is a time now we can have a question and answer session. So, very less students uh, are there till now. Okay. Anyway, those who are interested have stayed back. I uh, Nice to note that few students are there because I know I was going little fast because I wanted to finish the entire concept of the HACCP. So, now if you have any question, please uh, you can ask directly or also you can put them into the chat box. That is also possible. So, we will wait for another two to three minutes if you have question directly also you can ask or you can put it into the chat box if some some of your friends would like to join for the question answer session they can join uh, now also they can join sunita madam i have one request Yes, sir. Uh, madam, I am sharing one feedback form. Uh, ah. Please, please share that feedback form with all students. Okay, sir. Uh, so that they will uh, give their response. What I will do, uh, ah. I, I will share this feedback form with you. And then okay. uh, you put it in to the student group and ask them to fill up. It is a simple form about the class. Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, I I have shared with you, and even this uh, during this presentation, I will yeah. put it put it into the uh, chat box. Student, those who are here, they also yeah. can fill up. So I'm I'm just yes. put, putting the same link into the chat box. Please, students, those who are here, uh, just click it and fill up your opinion at the end. Let us finish discussion first and uh, then uh, we will you can fill up this form also anyway madam yeah. madam will share this link uh, at the end of the class in your whatsapp group okay so students uh, if you have a question please ask uh, even you can approach me later i will share my email id and contact numbers uh, contact number with you at the end of the presentation and uh, now next uh, semester you may be having some project work or anything that time also you are free to approach me uh, no problem okay so those who are here uh, at least uh, you can come up with a few questions so that we will discuss I understand that um, I, then I will ask few questions to you, those students please all of you can just put on your videos, uh, let us see whether you have understood or not. Anyway, no, no, no compulsion, but uh, if you have understood, uh, please just uh, understand what is the significance of seven principles in HACCP? I know it is all uh, when we do it practically in the kitchen, it have more significance uh, than a particular theory class. And uh, we try to uh, put entire HACCP in two hours time period. So that became very complicated. We can have a two to three sessions on HACCP so that we start with the significance, then we understand what are the hazards, what are the uh, control points and then the one session on the principles, seven principles and then the steps to be taken when we implement them actually into the kitchen operations. Okay, so that is the thing. Uh, if uh, among these also students are leaving, okay. 
so dear students what i will do i will share this ppt with the madam so that uh, she can share with you all and uh, let us go ahead uh, assuming that you don't have any question and uh, this is about my contact details all of you can note down uh, my email id and my uh, mobile number i would like to thank everyone uh, those who have attended my sessions session patiently it is very very important for all the uh, hotel management aspirant those who would like to work in the fnb service and food production area also at the end i would like to thank sunita madam throughout presentation she is still there in the presentation and also i would like to thank, you, thank all uh, sihm uh, uh, teacher friends the principal sir uh, and all uh, students okay so with this i will stop my presentation slide definitely this uh, definitely this uh, presentation i will share with the madam and hope you all have enjoyed my session so now madam more yes, sir, thank yes, sir. you sir oh, very yeah, good thank you sir omkar thank you for sharing, yeah, yeah. sharing such valuable information it will be very helpful to our students also yes. hope we will continue to looking forward for uh, new yeah. upcoming topics yes and yes we'll, madam. Uh, sure madam <laughs> and we will continue with your coordination and cooperation future also sir yes thank yes. you for all uh, icai entire uh, thank you uh, family yeah yeah <laughs> entire yeah. institute yeah yeah thank you and, madam uh, especially for mr uh, trilok sir also yes okay so at least you, uh, last few students were there and they have replied i am happy to see their responses now my request mm -hmm. uh, those students who are here my request to you that i have shared one uh, form with you all please fill up that form so that we will have some uh, valued record with us about the class happened today okay so uh, i request you people as well as request your friends to fill up that form it is very simple google form you can fill up through the mobile also okay so and also i sure, wish sure. i one wish one very uh, Um, uh, good luck for your future, uh, madam. You were saying something. Ah uh, yes, sir. Sir, you just uh, forward that same link in the WhatsApp group also, sir. Ah, uh, you that have link you have, form. You have forwarded to the student group. No, yeah, yeah. You just uh, send one form, sir. Feedback form regarding that. You just share me in the WhatsApp so that I'll forward to the school. Yes, yes. Already because shared uh, in your WhatsApp. that the link okay. is link is shared there in the your whatsapp group you also fill up your opinion and i request uh -huh. all student to fill up their opinion so okay. i think with this uh, uh, i will stop my uh, uh, session and uh, hmm. wish very best luck to all students thank you very much thank you sir thank, thank you, thank you sir. so much thank you sir. students no all, all student left madam now we both are <laughs> you can switch on your camera okay ah you can switch on your camera camera is not on yeah this is some problem is there with my <laughs> thing sir i will uh, yeah yeah okay okay you. okay how was it i whether i was too fast so okay but uh, students they are, they are getting <laughs> hmm? that is okay sir but uh, we need uh, time ah. slowly we need to complete yes 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 no no i also understood i was going little fast because um, that much we have to finish when we say has up it is not one part na yes yes it, it is depth uh, is the uh, content is more depth so uh, we need to go very slowly but time <laughs> time is not there with us mm. but okay sir. okay 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 thank you madam and thank you sir. we will have a few more sessions like this in future uh -huh. okay yeah yes yeah, sir sure sir okay thank you madam thank you thank you thank you very much sir You're welcome welcome thank you i will only just give me your uh, that uh, bank details and also that uh, yes, i'll take yes, a note yes i will i will i will share immediately after this session i will share bank details with your email. okay sir okay
थैंक यू सर थैंक यू थैंक यू बाय बाय